Thanks for tuning into our seller interview series. Up to date, we've got a six site package deal in the advertising niche. These sites were created in 2015 and 2016, and this business currently makes $9,825 per month in net profit. The listing number for this site package is 40742. Now we do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. Now we've got the seller with us today to go through the business. I cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. Thanks for coming on, Dirk. Hey, thanks, Gregory. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, no problem. Before we dive into the questions here, just to give everyone out there listening in a quick summary of the business. Like I mentioned, it was built in 2015 and 2016, all six sites, has a monthly revenue of $15,039 with expenses sitting at $5,214 for that total net profit of $9,825. That is over a six-month average, and with the sale of this business, we'll include six domains, email lists, the site files, and all the necessary tools to run the business. So, Dirk, for people out there just listening in can you give us a little background on what your you know what your background is on building and running online businesses okay so i've been into online marketing for a long time i can't really say when i originally started i mean i started like 10 years ago with a little blog here and there and a random affiliate site but it wasn't until about only maybe three or four years ago that i really started taking the online marketing stuff seriously And since I've started doing that, I've done a lot of different things, including running SEO services, building info marketing products, and uh, recently paid traffic and funnels. And this business that I got into now is mostly based around email marketing and paid traffic funnels. Okay. And how did you come up with this idea uh, without, you know, giving away the niche? Was there something about it that just kind of sang to you or what was it? Yeah, this niche, so I can't reveal it, but I've been interested in it personally for like several years already and I've always kind of dabbled a bit in it and did my own research and just enjoyed being in that industry, so it appealed to me. And earlier on this year, so at the moment it's December 2016, so towards the beginning of this year there was opportunities for me to get involved in this niche with uh, various different aspects that I kind of combined into one business, which is what this business is. And it just happened that I had like free time, free capital, and this opportunity was available to me. So I thought, why not? I always liked the industry and it has potential to make a lot of money. It's a very lucrative, evergreen industry that will be around for many, many years to come. So that's kind of just what got me into it. So it was kind of a combination of being passionate about the industry and seeing the opportunity and having the available time and capital to get started. It's great when all those things just come together, right? So for someone looking at this and they think, okay, six affiliate sites or six sites rather in the advertising niche, they might not know exactly, you know, what that means. Could you just briefly describe how these sites are making money? Yeah. So like I mentioned earlier, basically this is an email marketing business. So most of the revenue and the business revolves around sending out emails and autoresponder follow-up messages and sequences. So it has very little to do with the actual sites. The sites are not authority sites. They're not generating any sort of traffic. Most of them are just part of uh, lead capture pages, right? So we have different pages that we have different offers set up on. So when we drive traffic to these pages, we're able to collect the leads. And they're mostly like lead magnets, right? Lead bait to opt in. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any sort of SEO There's two sites that have recently been added as part of the six site package that have a little bit of SEO done for the purpose of attracting more more of our own clients that we sell traffic to. But the core of the business is basically just email marketing. So we have big email lists. As you can see on the listing, it's close to 90,000 people on these email lists. And we just regularly email these people, typically as much as once a day. And the revenue is split between selling advertising from these email lists so people come to us and they buy traffic from these email lists so they'll come and they'll buy for example 500 clicks or a thousand clicks and if they place that order with us we send to a unique tracking link we send the traffic to them and they get those 500 clicks so it can be absolutely countered like the ip addresses the everything where the clicks come from so they can be sure it's 100 percent unique clicks no fraud nothing 
and they basically pay us per click. That's one way in which we monetize. And the other way is just to promote other people's products and services as an affiliate. So let's say, for example, there's some sort of service that's paying X dollars per month in affiliate commissions, $50, $100 per month, we'll go and we'll promote that product. And then we'll get that recurring income. Or for example, someone launches a high ticket item for $1,000 or something, we'll promote that and we'll get a 50 or 60, 70% commission. And this is basically the core of the business. It's cool. Uh, so obviously, you have a pretty healthy cash flow here. It's very email heavy, which often can be automated depending on how you're doing the email funnels, of course. So why are you selling the business? Why not just keep it and grow it? That's always the question that uh, that has to be answered, right, when you're selling <laughs> yeah. it. But <laughs> basically, I just started this because I had some free time and capital and I didn't really have a direction at the time. So I just wanted a, a new project and a new challenge. But as I started with this, I have multiple projects going on um, in different industries. And basically, my focus is just split too much. And I've been doing things where I feel for myself personally, it's just too small. You know, like you might think like, okay, $10,000 a month is a lot of money, which it is in general. I'm not knocking that, but I want to get to bigger things. You know, I really want to build like multi-million dollar products and services and, and SaaS stuff. And the only way to do that is basically just to consolidate all my projects and then be able to have 100% focus just to focus on one big thing. So that's kind of what I'm working towards and the reason why I'm selling this now. That makes sense. So after the sale, you're planning on more or less from the sounds of it to take the capital that you get from the sale to infuse it into your other projects that you're looking to scale? Yeah, exactly. The capital, but also, you know, the time. Like, even though this business doesn't take a lot of time to run, like, you can literally run it probably with 30 minutes a day, if even. But just the fact of having it there and being responsible for it still kind of has that responsibility and takes away from my focus. So, right. you know, if, if it is out the way, then I can just dedicate my attention to you know, one big project. Now, when you first started this business, what was the trajectory like? Were you getting leads and customers coming in pretty quickly or did it take a while to find, uh, I'm assuming, the right paid campaign to make it convert? So what happened is basically at the beginning of the year, like I said, I had various opportunities to look into things. So what I did is I took a few different existing businesses within this industry that were kind of small. And so I bought into those. And then I combined them all and I just scaled it from there. So there was a bit of an initial learning curve, but I did have the initial momentum already when I purchased these businesses that they were already making a little bit of money and they already had a bit of an existing base. And from there, I just kind of going onwards. That's interesting. So you actually bought a, a few of these sites that were already making money then when you first started this? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, cool. I just bought a, a few different ones where I saw the potential of combining them together for getting a bigger effect you know because like a lot of time with online business you have a lot of people doing little things and they're doing their own little thing and it's making some money here and some money there but a lot of these small businesses if they were combined together and their email lists were used for like a bigger purpose and all working together it's just much more efficient and that's kind of what happened here yeah definitely is there anything you learned from building this business that you might be applying to your future projects any like one lesson that just really worked well for you yeah basically this was it is the first actually only email based as a core business like affiliate marketing and, and selling traffic and i've just learned a lot with buying traffic so we were like you can see in the expenses some months we were almost spending ten thousand dollars per month on buying traffic right to increase email leads and that's just something that I learned, like when you have a profitable funnel and you're able to break even on your ad spend, you can go out and you can spend as much money as you have in terms of cash flow and just build a bigger email list, which allows you to promote more products, make more commission and reinvest more and more. So I guess that's the thing that uh, initially, since I was new to this business, I didn't go too much all in on uh, buying traffic, but definitely that's something I'd recommend if it's working and you have a funnel where you're breaking even on your ad spend, go out and spend as much as you can, just reinvest the profits. Yeah, and, absolutely. And grow it. So that's one of the most beautiful things about paid traffic is once you find a converting campaign, typically scale it, depending, you know, obviously on the niche and the audience size, but usually you can scale it pretty easily once you find that converting campaign. Do you find that to be relatively true? What, where you re have to reinvest the monies? No, no, no. Uh, once you find a campaign that is converting, you, do you find it pretty easy to scale that campaign? Because it, isn't it just more or less making your bid higher or your budget higher on yeah, that yeah, campaign? Yeah, absolutely. So the main thing uh, 
the traffic source, I don't know, I don't think I should reveal it here. No, no, but it's like, <laughs> what, what we're doing is uh, <laughs> we just, it's very easy to scale it. It's basically just a matter of buying more. So it's not so much dependent on having any uh, like specific accounts or having any special access or anything. Yeah. The sources that I have, like where I'm buying traffic from, I'll reveal to the new buyer, of course. And it's basically just a matter of spending more money and you'll be able to get more traffic. I was just referring to just, you know, versus SEO, you can't really do the same thing, right? Like once you, you rank your site, you can't like, all right, now I'm going to spend yeah, an extra 50 no. bucks, it's going <laughs> to rank even more, you know? <laughs> and, uh, not at all, which is makes this, uh, this business very nice in terms of potential. You know, like people always talk about like, yeah, this business has this much potential. But like you say, with SEO, there's a lot less potential to scale it. But with this, literally... Like you're able to, if you're able to put in double the money or triple the money, you're able to get much more leads and you're able to make more money like instantly, you know? Right. Is there anything you learned from this business that just didn't work? Like maybe something you tried that just failed on its face, something like that? I got to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> All easy selling. <laughs> yeah, it's basically just like certain products will work and certain products will not. So since we're like heavy on affiliate marketing, we promote a lot of different products and so as part of the deal, like when you take over this business, I'll introduce you to a specific JV groups on Skype where we have like between 100 and 200 different people who are all product owners, all in the same industry. And these people typically tend to share like when they do a new product launch, they'll be like, hey, I'm launching a new product coming up next week. Do you guys want to promote? And they give us like special offers and stuff. And sometimes just these offers work very well and sometimes they don't. And it's just something you get more of a feel for. It's hard to explain, really, but you get to learn more, like, which kind of offers will work for which reasons, you know, based on the pricing model, based on the offer and the angle that they have and things like that. And you just get to learn a little bit what you should go for, what you think will do well and won't. And obviously, that's knowledge I'll also pass on to the new buyer. Yeah, so I, I'm assuming the mistakes you probably made early on were just affiliate offers that didn't convert very well. You know, you probably had to test that quite considerably from the sounds of it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, every time when you send out an email, if you send it to an offer that's not converting, you're potentially missing out on a couple hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or something, you know, so it's a waste of promoting offers that don't convert. Yeah, absolutely. Moving into kind of the traffic and the earnings here on the site or the business, rather, you already said you don't really have any organic and it's pretty much 100 percent paid traffic from the sounds of it. Is it coming from mainly just one source or do you have multiple different vehicles driving that paid traffic? Yeah, at the moment, it's split from, so I, I have select people I buy traffic from, right? It's not one specific source. So there's multiple sources that I do buy traffic from. And then it has the potential to scale across other just advertising platforms. So if you have any experience with, for example, Facebook or Bing or YouTube, there's really a lot of potential to run campaigns on there, even White Hat. So, you know, this is a big industry and it's very possible just to run legitimate advertising campaigns without worrying of getting banned and then you just have to figure out if it's possible to be able to get a break even on your ad spend if you're getting the clicks at you know a good price and you're able to break even on that then again it's just a matter of spending as much as you can to build the email list as far as earning type goes what would you say is kind of your is it dominated by affiliate offers where you're earning the most or do you think it's pretty split between affiliate offers and solo ads you're sending out into the actual email list? Yeah, I think, I don't have the numbers in front of me, I think the solo ads makes up about 60% of the revenue, so basically selling traffic to other buyers, and the affiliate marketing makes up the rest, and that's mainly because with solo ads, so when I'm selling traffic to other people, it's guaranteed, you know, I get right. a fixed income per click, so every email I send out, I know I'm making this much money, Versus affiliate offers where it's kind of hit and miss, like I said, sometimes you'll do really well, but sometimes you won't make any sales from an email. And it's kind of, that's why it's a bit heavier leaning towards selling the traffic. Yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of uh, a guaranteed, what, what is that term? Not CPC, but earning per click, EPC. Yeah, that's earning, what I'm going exactly. Yeah. Earning per click. You agree on a price, you send this many clicks, and you're guaranteed to get that money no matter if the lead buys anything or not. You know, that's not the issue. We're just selling the traffic. For sure. Now, speaking of the stability of the earnings, how are the earnings? Are they Do they fluctuate? Is there some kind of seasonality at all in the niche? Or do they stay pretty stable as long as you keep plugging that paid traffic? 
Yeah, I think in general, we can have a pretty steady base. There will be some fluctuations. I think as far as I know, this is a little bit seasonal. So within the summer months, so the American summer months, like I think two months there, so August and September, there is a bit of a dip. Not a huge dip, but just basically because everyone goes on vacation, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's just part of it. And then after that, it's just pretty steady year round. Because like I said, it's an evergreen niche. It's going to be around. It's applicable to like many, many people, even a lot of people who are just, you know, wanting to get into that and kind of improve themselves and their like financial situation and stuff like that. It's very possible. Awesome. Um, to get a lot of people on board, yeah. Now, if you, let's say, hypothetically, where you were going to keep these businesses, this email list and all that good stuff, and you're going to keep growing it, what would be the least risky thing you would do to grow this business? The least risky thing? I'd say just continue uh, buying traffic and just keep working on the funnel, keep improving the funnel and being able to buy more traffic, right? So the core of the business is the email subscribers. So the more subscribers I have, the more money I make because the more clicks I'm able to sell in terms of traffic and the more people I'm able to send to affiliate offers. So it makes sense just to be able to focus on building out more campaigns that are profitable for collecting email leads and then buying traffic. That's the one part of it and that's probably the least risky part. And the second part would be to create my own product or my own service. So. If you're in this industry already and you have your own product or service, that would be great because you can use the email subscribers to promote your own product. But if you don't, you know, it's possible to put in several weeks and create a whole funnel with possibly, you know, a front end product or service with a higher upsell and a whole funnel for that. And just push all these leads that you're collecting through your own funnel for your own product first. And after that, use them for affiliate offers and selling traffic. So that would be the second step, I think. Okay, and on the flip side here, what would you do if you were incredibly risky just through caution to the wind and you wanted to, you know, pedal to the metal, grow this business as fast as humanly possible? What would you do in that case? I think the same step same, applies. Yeah, I like figured the same thing. <laughs> you, just have, you just have to grow it, you know? Just faster. Like, yeah, exactly. So the nice thing about the paid traffic is you can totally control your budget, right? If you want to spend $100 a day, you can. If you want to go and spend $10,000 a day, you can. It just has to make sense for the funnel. So, yeah. That's what I'd say. Absolutely. Speaking of your funnel, a uh, little sidestep here. What kind of funnel do you have? Do you have like an automated list of emails that goes out a certain time? Like say like, all right, this lead subscribed. Now he's going to have a 30-day follow-up. Or, or do you do like pure broadcast kind of emails or just kind of depends? Yeah, it's very basic at the moment how it's set up. So I'm, I'm using Aweber as the autoresponder. Or there's actually two, but Aweber is one of them. So if you're familiar with Aweber, you know it's not the most super functional, you know, <laughs> CRM or anything. It's not like Infusionsoft where you can go super complicated based on actions. You send certain follow-ups. So basically, we've got about a, a 20 follow-up email sequence for all new members. And this goes out just, just every day, a different email for a different affiliate product or service. Besides that, so those are all emails that the lead gets automatically. Besides that, we'll send out manual broadcasts when we're selling traffic or promoting other affiliate offers. Awesome, man. It's cool. When it comes to actual risk to the business, we talked about you know being incredibly risky and not being so risky. What do you think the biggest risk actually is for a buyer that's looking to purchase this business? Like every online business has a risk, right? Like with SEO, you have the risk that Google slaps your sites. With paid traffic, you have risks that your account gets banned. With this I'd say the biggest risk, even though it's unlikely, is that, for example, maybe your autoresponder account gets banned, right? For whatever reason, or they go out of service. Like, say, for example, Aweber would stop working, then it would be a risk in the sense that we're not able to send traffic, which would basically stop the flow of income, even though the solution for that would be, you know, you have access to the email lists, so you can go and find another autoresponder, upload your list, and start mailing from that. So it wouldn't be the end of the world. Yeah, it sounds like you're also fairly diversified with three different paid traffic sources. So if one goes down, you still have two others. And it sounds like you have on your touched Facebook yeah, or some of these bigger networks. Exactly. So with any online business, especially with this also, with affiliate marketing, like one thing you need to understand is that offers come and go all the time, right? So there'll be a new offer that works really well. And then for a while, it'll work. 
And then after, say, after a few months, the offer will stop working, maybe because it's just finished or it's not relevant anymore. And then the offer will go. And then maybe that source of income where you were making good money for the last three months will disappear. But then you have to wait for the next offer. And just part of the the overall game, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something you have to understand. And when you have a problem, you just have to look for the next solution. So like we said, with buying traffic, if one of the sources disappears, you just have to look for another source. There's always traffic everywhere. There's always affiliate offers everywhere. And you just got to keep kind of involved with that. Yeah, absolutely. I like the model that you're doing with the email marketing because I know a few paid affiliate marketers, they basically just you know send the traffic direct to the offer without collecting a list at all. So you're, you're kind of building an asset for those kind of dry months when you do have a new offer that you can test out to a much bigger group of people right away. Have you found that's been pretty useful for you? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's pretty much never a dull moment, you know, like there's <laughs> never something like, oh, my campaign's not working or something. You have those email subscribers that you can email whenever you want. So when there's a new offer, you know, and, and it's also like you're not limited to having only like one or two offers that you can promote. There's literally like thousands of different offers in this industry. So if you ever find yourself like, hey, I don't have anything to promote today, you know, head over to ClickBank, head over to some other place, find an offer in the industry and just send an email to the list and see what it does, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, email marketing is pounded over and over again by internet marketers being like, you know, the money's in the list, the money's in the list, but it's rare to actually see any marketer actually using email. So I, I think that's really cool. Moving to the kind of the work required, can you describe what kind of work you're actually doing to maintain this business? You said earlier a person could maintain it about 30 minutes a day, but what does that 30 minutes look like? Yeah, so mainly like the minimal maintenance to run the business um, the main work involved, like I said, is basically scheduling the emails every now and then buying the traffic, which typically I just do once a month. So I'll place an order with our source and I'll tell them like, okay, this month we want this many clicks that we're buying. I make the payment. That's a very small kind of thing. It's We have like a understanding. So that's easy to do. Basically, I just write out very short emails, 300 to 500 words, sometimes not even to be able to send out, you know, to the people who buy the traffic from us and to the affiliate offers. That's something, of course, I'll show the new buyer how to do. Very easy to do. That takes, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes to write out an email. So depending on how much work I have for the day, if I have one or two emails, that's pretty much all I do every single day to run this business. So just writing out the emails. And then, of course, I have the Skype group. So I just check in every now and then, like when there's some activity, you know, I'll just check on Skype sometimes. I won't need to interact with anyone for a few days. And, and sometimes every day I have like a five, five minute quick conversation with someone or like some of my regular buyers who are buying traffic for me, they'll hit me up and say like, hey, do you have availability? And I'll be like, okay. And they send me, you know, their email swipe that I send out for them, their link that I mail to. And I just schedule that within Aweber. And that's pretty much it. Excellent. Is there any skills or requirements you would suggest for a buyer to have before they look at purchasing a business like this? No, not necessarily. It's very easy to learn. Like if we have new buyer, even if they don't know anything, I'm pretty confident I can get them to running the business like full steam within four weeks, probably even less because there's not a lot of work involved. It would certainly help if you're like like a friendly kind of person. So, you know, because it's a Skype group. So if you're able to like just talk to people on Skype and I didn't mean like voice call, just like chat with people and get to know them, like introduce yourself, try and be friendly and stuff like that. It can definitely help because the relationships, like in any business, relationships are key. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Doing some wrap-up questions here, it sounds like you wouldn't have a problem with this, but after you sell this business, would you be willing to sign a non-compete, basically telling that new owner, like, hey, look, I'm not going to start this exact same business that you just bought for me? <laughs> yeah, I have no problems with a non-compete, and we can work out the terms of that with the new buyer. That's uh, not an issue. Awesome. And you already mentioned kind of four weeks as the amount of support, but could you just briefly describe what kind of support you'd be willing to give a new buyer? I'm pretty flexible on that. Like I'd want the new buyer to be able to learn how to run the business without any issues. You know, it's not like I'm going to say like, oh, four weeks and then I'm going to disappear or anything like that. I'm pretty confident when the new person takes over the new buyer within four weeks, they can understand everything that's there. And for the rest, I'll just be on Skype or email. And if they have any questions, you know, it doesn't matter if it's like two or three months later, I'm not going to go anywhere. So I'm happy to help out. Within reason, of course. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Within reason. Now, the best case scenario here is for someone to come in and buy your business full list price, best for you, best for Empire Flippers. But would you at all be open for, say, someone coming in like, hey, look, I'll put 
seventy percent down now, and then I'll give you the remaining thirty percent after the support period has ended, where you've trained me up and I'm comfortable running the business. Would you at all be open to an earn out of some sort like that? Yeah, absolutely. That's not an issue. I'm I'm happy if uh, you know the bulk of the price is paid up front, and then we can work out some sort of financing, which will make it easier for the buyer. Also, that's not an issue. Awesome. Before I ask you the final hot seat question here, Dirk, just to give a quick summary again for everyone out there listening in, these six sites were built between 2015 and 2016 as a monthly revenue of $15,039 with expenses sitting at $5,214 for a total net profit of $9,825. And that is over a six month average. With the sale of this business includes the six domains, the email list we were just talking about, the site files, and all the necessary tools to run the business. So, Dirk, my final question for you is, what is your best pitch in 30 seconds or less on why someone should purchase this business? All right. I haven't thought about this one, but uh, <laughs> let, let me try and do that off the top of my head. The main thing is, so it's you have an asset, you have the email subscribers. There's potential for massive growth, like instant growth. It's not reliant on SEO or any sort of organic stuff. So you have total control over how you're going to grow it. I'm going to teach you how to do that in terms of you know where to buy traffic, how to build the funnel, etc. And it's very low maintenance to run. Like I said, you can literally run it probably with 30 minutes a day. If you want to grow it, you have to put in some more time, of course, like with any business. But so very low maintenance, easy to scale. And, you know, you have a real asset that you can use at any time. Yeah, absolutely. And like I mentioned before, I love the fact that the business is basically the email list. Because, again, that's where the money is at the end of the day for the most part. For those out there watching this on YouTube, if you're wanting more information about this business, the link will be below the video and it will take you to our marketplace listing. And if you're watching this on the actual listing page and you want more information, you can become a depositor today. It's super easy. All you have to do is click the button, make a deposit, and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. So Dirk, thank you so much for coming on, man. It was an absolute pleasure. Awesome. Thanks, Gregory.